Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Douche. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> miracles. Whenever we're told of miracles, it's normally a story from the past. Well, popular miracles anyway. But I want to talk about a modern day miracle. As you know, since the dawn of the COVID crisis, the Saudis have not allowed anybody to enter the Haram. Yeah, the blessed sanctuary near the Kaaba. Now seeing as there's never been a time in our history that the Kaaba has been empty, this sent shockwaves throughout the Ummah. Because people are either going for Umrah or they were planning to go for Ramadan, but both have been cancelled. In fact, the only people that are allowed near the Kaaba are either the officials or the cleaners. And it was this picture that went viral. You can see the space in front of the Kaaba is absolutely empty apart from one single man who is praying. And that man was a cleaner. Normally our society is riddled with class dispute and class issues. I'm oh, better than this person, this person's better than me. But this just made everybody pause. And what took this even forward was a female Arab artist made a depiction of this. She bought a pigeon next to him because some of you may know that when the Dawaf had been stopped, people could see pigeons <laughs> circumambulating the Kaaba, going around and doing Dawaf of the Kaaba. This was printed in newspapers. This was forwarded by loads of accounts. This also went viral as well. I was speaking to Abu Bakr about this and he made a brilliant point. He was like, bro, a lot of people look down upon these cleaners, but now, <laughs> boy, we would do anything, anything to be one of those cleaners so we can pray Taraweeh behind Sheikh Sudais. And even when we're there, we just walk past them or whatnot. Some people are a bit intelligent because, you know, you want to give charity there and they are probably one of the wisest investments for you. Yeah, because they're working there, you, you know their background or whatnot, and they're not paid the best. So giving them a bit of change is obviously a virtuous thing to do. But nevertheless, a cleaner isn't really regarded as top in our society. But now if somebody says you want to be a cleaner in the Haram, of course you're going to say yes. You know, Allah has afforded these people the highest of ranks. SubhanAllah, but in our eyes, they are the lowest. And this goes to show that Izza and status in our eyes and our perception is different to the perception of Allah. Allah values people through their deeds. And you can't know somebody's deeds just by looking at them. There's this brilliant quote that's attributed to Tom Hardy, who's played Bane in Dark Knight and who's also acted in Venom. And he says, I was raised to treat the janitor with the same respect as the CEO. To be fair, I guess people don't really befriend or respect cleaners because they don't have anything to gain from them. Let's face it, if you look at our friend circles, it's normally this person's useful to me, that person's useful to me, this or that. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But all I'm saying is, ironically speaking, the people who you help when they are of no benefit to you. Ironically, they are the most benefit to you because they are giving you the most deeds and Allah will reward you for it on the day of judgment. But the people that you do have something to gain from, you're not doing it for the sake of Allah. So there's not really many deeds to gain from them. And we do live in a society of snobbery, yeah? Looking down at somebody just because they're on a, a lower status than you. In fact, snobbery has been traced back to 1820s England, where in the Oxford and Cambridge colleges or universities, and next to the people who didn't come from a arist aristocratic background, they would write the words sine nobilitate. And that was then shortened to s dot nob, snob. And over time, the meaning shifted to the opposite of what it was once meant for. And last night, I was just thinking about this. You know, Allah can make a sign out of the most insignificant of things. Even in the Quran, Allah is not shy to use the most insignificant of creatures to give us a lesson. 
whether it's a bee or whether it's an ant. And here, one man praying to Allah alone. Who knows what was in his heart? Who knows the sincerity and the devotion he was displaying that Allah said to him, I am going to use you. I'm going to use your example and I'm going to show it to the globe. I mean, a very similar example comes to mind of Ibrahim salam when Allah asked him, call the people to the house. Call the people and there was no one there. There was no microphone, there was no WhatsApp, there was no satellite television and he called. He called and Allah took his call and Allah transferred it throughout the ages. That since that time till today and inshallah till the day of judgment, people will be going to the Kaaba morning and evening. When I was at Umrah, I tried to go at two o'clock at night. I thought maybe everyone's going to be asleep and there's going to be less people there. <laughs> I went at that time and it seems everybody has followed my logic and there was more rush than usual. Imagine if that cleanup was told years in advance. My friend, there will come a time that you will be the only one prostrating in front of the Kaaba. The only one. He'd say, are you trying to take the mick mate? Are you trying to pull a fast one? I mean, if somebody told me, I'd just look at them and go, oh, okay there, buddy. Okay. Have a little nap, relax. Yeah, go lie down there for a minute. Calm down. But I guess this is what Allah means by الصالحين, that Allah is the guardian of the righteous. Allah is. This is a promise he's making. If you are righteous, Allah will be your guardian. I mean, we trust the bus driver when we board public transport. We have blind trust in him that he will take us to our destination. He's not going to randomly take our left turn and stop for a, for a barbecue or something. We trust the sun that every day it will rise in the morning and it will set in the evening. To some degree, even the government. Look, let me say, politicians have always lied. But it used to be if you caught them lying, they'd be like, oh man. Now they just keep on lying. The banks. I mean, we trust people that do not deserve our trust. But here Allah is saying, Allah is the guardian of the righteous. It's a promise that he will be your guardian if you are righteous. Let's apply this to our lives now, yeah? You and me, we're both going through things in our life, yeah? We may not be telling other people, but we're going through stuff. But do your best and Allah will do the rest. Whatever is in your control, do it. Yeah, do it. If you're looking for a, a partner to get married to, you know, look, you know, go on these sites, you know, send your CV to your friends and tell your local Imam, do what's in your power. And then somebody actually, a suitable partner coming to you or a chance encounter outside or with, you know, a, a friend or who knows. Yeah, that's up to Allah. But do what you can from your side. Do your best, then Allah will do the rest. That second bit is Iman. But some people confuse the two. They don't even work hard and they say, yeah, yeah, Allah will do it, Allah will do it. Come on, mate. This is a world of means. If you don't do anything, you don't get anything. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you guys benefited from this small reminder. I'll leave it there until next time. Assalamu alaikum.